Today we're going to walk you through how you can take a shed, a euro, a skull cap, or even a full shoulder mount, and with just the photos on your smartphone, you'll be able to turn your animal into a mini muley. Once you've purchased a custom on the website, you'll receive a couple things. You'll receive a web link for where you'll upload your photos once they're taken, but before you take those photos, you'll also receive a PDF printout of coded targets made specifically for your prints. There's no perfect way in how to cut out the targets and you don't even need to use every single one of them, but cut them out where you can clearly see the full target and we'll be using these in how we take the photos. Let's talk a little bit about the space where you can take your photos. Now you can take your photos outside or inside. We even have customers take photos right of their animal in the field and then send those photos to us. So anything can work, but I want to give you a few tips for success so that we can get the very best quality for you and your mini. No matter what it is you're setting up, lighting is important. And so you want to make sure that you don't have any strong or direct lighting on any surface of the antlers and ideally on any surface of the skull. Overcast days, um, that's a great example of kind of even lighting that can be around the entire piece. One other thing you want to avoid is having a high gloss on your antlers, which can give a bright reflection and it can cause problems when we're doing the photos. So one tip here, depending on how brown your antlers are or how glossy some areas are, you can take even some flour from home, the same flour you use to make some cookies or make some bread, and just kind of rub that onto the antlers to give it a little bit more of a powdered or matte finish. Doing that will not affect your mini whatsoever. If anything, it will help. When taking photos of your animal or your antler, there's also a couple things that are important. Now, there's a lot of mistakes that you can make, but one thing that cannot be made is that once this is set, you cannot move the piece. So if you accidentally bump it, or if it moves a little bit, it's easiest and best to just simply start over. So make sure that whatever it is that you're taking photos of it's secure and it's stable if you're doing this outside be mindful of things like the wind or any other factors that could move or bump the image that you're taking photos of in addition to placing targets around your object you can also place them anywhere that's going to be in the proximity of the photo this simply gives an area for the photos to recognize and again it improves the accuracy not all of the targets need to be used they don't need to place be placed in any particular order but they're simply a reference point that helps with your images now we're ready to take the photos now in total a lot of people ask how many photos we always want at least 100 photos but no more than 200 photos so while it's hard to count and keep track of exactly how many that is you're shooting for about 150 total photos from all angles. So once you have your object set up, you're going to go around it in several circles. Now to imagine this, one thing that I like to do is imagine that you have a big inflatable beach ball that's see-through and that your object is at the very center of that. What you're going to do is use the edges of that ball or that orb to be able to know where to take your photos from. So while you can take your photos from any angles, the goal is to capture everything on the antlers and always from about the same distance. So let's do an example. First thing I'm gonna do is be at about the same perspective of if I'm just standing and do a full 360 around the image. So I'll get in place, take a photo, make sure it's in focus, move slightly, take a photo, take a photo, take a photo and I'll repeat this all the way around the object until I've been able to get it from every perspective. Once you've gotten photos from at least that one angle surrounding it, you're going to look to get photos from above and from below. Now one reason that I put this on this step stool is because it allows me to get underneath um, a little bit easier. Sometimes I've had these propped on the ground even. And I'm on my belly kind of doing an army crawl to get that underneath perspective. That's fine. This setup right here is just an example that makes it a little bit easier. So now let's do some photos from underneath. Now again, I want to be from about the same distance. 
distance as I took the other photos, but now I'm going to get them from underneath. So focus, take a photo. 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 And once again, I'll do this all the way around the image. Now one thing again to keep track of as you're doing these photos is that the lighting is going to show up a little bit differently. So making sure to also touch on your phone to make sure it's focused and that you have good, adequate light of the antlers and that that lighting is even, that's important. If you're getting dark shadows or if you're getting super bright spots, that can affect the overall quality and result. Finally, we'll take some photos from the above perspective. Same thing, full 360, about the same distance from your object. So focus, take a photo. up to you. 
you and whatever you're able to figure out. But once again, end result, overall goal is to capture all areas and all surfaces without having a lot of it hidden where you can't capture it. Last and most importantly, however you end up supporting your antler, whether outdoors or indoors, whether with fishing line, wood, or just simply propped up somewhere where you can take the photos, make sure that it is stable. If you're hanging it from a, a line or something like that, even the slightest motion is going to make this ineffective and we're unable to capture the detail that's needed. So be sure that your object is always stationary, stable, and not moved. And once again, even if it's an accident, if you accidentally bump it, or if it adjusts somehow, start over from scratch, it's a lot easier to do it that way. One other thing to note, your background can really be anything, but you're always looking for solid colors, solid walls, you want to avoid clutter, you want to avoid a lot of detail, that's going to affect the overall quality and how much detail is getting captured here, as opposed to everything surrounding it. So sometimes laying out a blanket or a sheet, or if you have one, lay out a full green screen that can help improve the quality of what's being captured and it keeps the focus once again on the antler that you're trying to recreate. And it's as simple as that. Once you finish capturing your photos, we've provided a custom link for you to upload and send those photos our way. From that point, we'll take the rest. We're going to handcraft and get your mini created, hand painted and sent back your way. Whether this is a unique gift for yourself or for someone else, Creating your own mini muley from your very own animal is truly something unique and special. Whether you're displaying it in your truck, at your office, in your home, or again as a gift to someone else, in often less than five minutes, you can take these photos, send them our way, and we're going to craft and create your custom mini so that you can enjoy it, display it, and show it off for 